Well, today I want to talk about the epidemic of obesity and diabetes. There's an absolute epidemic here on obesity and diabetes. We're the number one obese nation in the world. 55% study out from UCLA, uh, 55% of adults in California are either diabetic, type 2 diabetic, or pre-diabetic. 55%. Okay. So what's going on here? Well, um, both are nutritional deficiency diseases. It turns out that, uh, that diabetes is a deficiency of a single mineral. We've known that, gosh, for 85 years. Obesity has nothing to do with eating too much or lack of exercise. Obesity is due to a deficiency of a whole class of nutrients. Any one of those nutrients in that class that are low or absent will result in people being overweight or obese. There are three of these nutrients in this class of nutrients. If you're deficient in any one or any combination of two or three of them, you're going to be the 400-pound, 600-pound, 800-pound, 1,200-pound person. So once you get a hold of the books, uh, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the book uh, Hell's Kitchen, and the subtitle is uh, The Cause for Ancient Cure Obesity, and the book Energy Crisis. I don't talk enough about that book, probably, Energy Crisis. We'll talk about that a little bit. And then I want you to ask your associate about uh, our Slender Effects Keto um, uh, Caramel Shake and our Keto Caramel Bar, Meal Bar. Okay. And, of course, the whole idea here is uh, to do ketogenic diets, and this is where the Energy Crisis book comes in, goes into all the different sugar substitutes and tells you which ones are synthetic and which ones are um, uh, natural. It gives you a, a, a sort of a classification of how sweet they are compared with table sugar, and so you know which one you want to use, and calories and so forth. And obviously, you want to use the non-caloric ones, uh, such as stevia, if you're diabetic. And then, of course, Hell's Kitchen goes into great detail of um, both type 2 diabetes and obesity and how they are nutritional deficiencies as opposed to um, genetic and certainly has nothing to do with eating too much or lack of exercise. So um, this goes back a long ways. And the reason why there's an epidemic going on here, these nutrients are no longer found in our food in optimal amounts. Uh, there's a, a, a rapid deficiency of these nutrients and resulting in this high rate in climbing. I mean, it's like going vertical, epidemic of type 2 diabetes and the epidemic of obesity. And um, it, it has to do with technology. There's always big changes that come along with technology. And, of course, our nutrition is no different. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Monday, September 4th, 1882, on Pearl Street in New York City, the bluff we're looking at construction of Brooklyn Bridge, Thomas Edison pulled the switch in the first commercial electric generating plant and getting people to move away from what is universal fuel, which they've been using for 5,000 years or more, all over the world, everybody figured out how to use wood for fuel, and also throw their wood ashes, a.k.a. plant minerals, or plant minerals, a.k.a. wood ashes, into the garden, which was a great fertilizer, stimulating growth and yield. But also, unbeknownst to anybody, even today, most people don't know this, including professors of agriculture and environmentalists and physicians don't know this, but when you use wood ashes for fertilizer, the plants would suck up the minerals that were in the wood ashes, which made up 95 to 98 percent of the volume of these this powder. It wasn't all ashes; it was primarily minerals. The tree had sucked up out of the ground, and people ate the food, fertilized with wood ashes, got their minerals in that fashion, and people were slim as a result. And so, basically, when we switched over electricity, how many wood ashes were left over? None. And what did people replace that traditional source of nutritional minerals, which we've been using for 5,000 years? Nothing. And so and even ask a doctor specifically, shouldn't I be supplementing with vitamins and minerals in case there's not enough of everything in food? Oh, no, just eat well, you get everything you need. Well, medical doctors, I have to point my finger at them and say that they are the actual cause of the obesity epidemic in America and the, and the epidemic of diabetes because they're telling you just eat well, don't supplement. You cannot get these nutrients from your food anymore. Remember, type 2 diabetes is not genetic. Obesity is not genetic. Obesity is not eating too much, a lack of exercise. Both type 2 diabetes and obesity is due to nutritional deficiencies. And again, I urge you to get a hold of the books, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the CD, Dead Doctors Don't Lie. CD is in nine languages, for goodness sakes. And then Hell's Kitchen, this, the subtitle is The Cause, Wrench, and Cure Obesity. It also discusses type 2 diabetes and the metabolic syndrome. There is a CD that goes along with it by the same title, Hell's Kitchen. And the book, Energy Crisis, it goes into how your body extracts energy from proteins and fats of all kinds, there's various types of fats and also carbohydrates, and goes into the story of coffee and tea 
and the, the antioxidant benefits in coffee and tea and the history of how they got part of our society and everything. That's in the book Energy Crisis. And, of course, we also have a wonderful coffee, um, a great coffee. And if you, if you um, drink it black or even the, the um, flavored coffees like our premium roast Java Fit coffee or our premium roast hazelnut cinnamon flavored coffee, they'll actually also contribute to the um, weight loss. And as long as you stay on the 90 essential nutrients, the magic here is, folks, you'll never gain the weight back. You can lose 40, 50, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 pounds, and you'll never gain the weight back as long as you stay on your 90 essential nutrients. You have to take in that basic program. We actually have a basic program called the Healthy Weight Loss Pack. It has all 90 essential nutrients, 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 minerals, and 3 fatty acids. And again, to understand how all this works, Get a hold of the book, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the CD, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the book, Hell's Kitchen, the CD, Hell's Kitchen, and the book, Energy Crisis, and learn how to lose that weight and keep it off. Learn how you can support and promote healthy blood sugar and healthy metabolism of sugar and carbohydrates and fats at the cellular level, and you'll be an ex-diabetic. Woo! We'll be back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us? Well, I thought we'd talk a little bit about good fats today, as I've got a study that came out of Harvard's medical school, and this one actually kind of vindicates you, Doc. They say that uh, the headline of this CNN story is, Good Fats Can Cut the Risk of Death by 27%, study says, and this all came from Harvard, and it was the most detailed and powerful examination of the relationship between types of dietary fats and mortality. Lead author was a Dr. Frank B. Hugh, a professor of nutrition and epidemiology, and it says for his study, uh, de- demonstrates that not all fats are created equal and that eating healthy, unsaturated fats at the expense of unhealthy, saturated, and trans fats is an important way to live longer and healthier. They analyzed the habits of 126,000 men and women over a 32-year period from 1980 to 2012. And each, uh, they checked in with every couple of years to up to four years about the types of fats they had in their diets. And then the, in the study, they, people started off with no signs of cancer, type 1 or 2 diabetes, or cardiovascular disease. And they had each participant fill out questionnaires about the types of fats that they consumed of 150 fatty foods, as well as types of margarine fat or oil that they used to prepare dishes. They then found that although eating more saturated fat and trans fat was associated with an increase in mortality, eating more polyunsaturated and monosaturated fats lowered the risk of death. Study found that people replaced a mere 5% of their calorie intake from bad fats with polyunsaturated fats. They could reduce the risk of death by 27%. And those that replaced it with monosaturated fats replace, um, reduce their risk of death by 13%. And then they go on to say that uh, the study didn't stop there. They also compared uh, the fat intakes and other uh, diseases like cardiovascular disease, cancer, neurodegenerative disease, respiratory disease. And they found some new and interesting things. The people who ate more healthy fats had a lower risk of dying from neurodegenerative and respiratory disease, but both those causes of death increased significantly with higher trans fat intake. We say different roles of different fats. Polyunsaturated fats contain essential fats your body can't produce, such as omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids, something you've been talking about for as long as I've known you as far as eating foods that contain these uh, essential nutrients as well as supplementing with them. Yeah, well, that's one of the uh, nine lawsuits that I've lodged against the FDA and federal court and prevailed. Uh, We were the ones that showed that... um, you have to supplement with the omega threes, and of course uh, sixes and nines also. You just have to have the right ratios, and by doing that, you can uh, reduce your risk significantly of um, thrombotic stroke, or you get a blood clot in the brain, coronary thrombosis, or you get a blood clot in the coronary artery, um, uh, pulmonary embolism, or you get a blood clot in the lung, deep vein thrombosis. And of course, these are common causes of debility or death. And you know, you need about uh, oh, so I like to take in five or six grams. A day, and I take in about 18 grams a day because I fly so much. But uh, the average person, if they take in five, five or six grams, which are you know five of our capsules uh, of EFAs or EFA pluses, which are from things like um, flax oils, um, evening primrose oil, fish oils, in particular, uh, you can significantly reduce your risk of blood clots all over the body. And so it will extend your life to supplement with the unsaturated fats, but they're also a double-edged sword, and trans fats come from 
these polyunsaturated fats if you don't take care of them. And so that's what makes us unique is we take very, very good care of these oils before we close the soft gels. We make sure that uh, they do not become trans fats when they get oxidized by heat or by, or by uh, oxygen in the air or light. And so bulk oils are bad because they oxidize very quickly and turn into trans fats. So again, thank you so much. You really did a great job there bringing that one up. And we'll be back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the only time they won't, after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to California. And Christina, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Well, Christina, you're on the air. Yes, hi, Dr. Wallach. Um, actually, hi. Christina is my daughter. And I spoke with you two months ago regarding my issues, and I really thank you. Thank you very much. It helped me a lot. And now I'm calling for my daughter. And she's okay. here. One moment, please. Her name is Christina. Here. Hello, Dr. Wallach. This is Christina. Okay, and how old are you? Uh, I am 20, I, 26 years old. Okay, and how much do you weigh? I weigh 161. Okay, how tall are you? 5'6". Okay, how can we help you today? Um, doctor, I've had two C-sections, and um, with two months ago, um, during my menstrual cycle, I felt this like a lump around my C-section area. Um, I went to the hospital, I went to urgent care, and then um, uh, I went to ultrasound. They thought it was a hernia. However, mm -hmm. I have this, like, strong feeling where it's not hernia because I have very heavy menstrual cycle, and it would hurt so much. So then they scheduled me for an MRI, and they found out that I have endometriosis and a dermoid cyst. And so... Um, okay, is a dermoid doctor, cyst in your ovaries or in your uterus? Um, the dermoid cyst is in my ovary, and it's like about five centimeters. Mm -hmm. And then the okay. endometriosis is like three centimeters. Okay. And so the endometriosis is uh, the cause of that little lump in your surgical sites. Yeah, that's what. Uh, yeah, okay. that's what they think. They said okay. that's what they suspect. Okay. Did they tell you what a dermoid cyst is? Um, yeah, the, they said it's like a sac like where there's teeth and hair inside the. Yeah, it's a, it's a twin. Uh, it's your twin. And um, so when you were a uh, flat disc and this other baby was a flat disc, you went into a tube first and you engulfed and essentially swallowed your twin. And so your twin grew up uh, is like it's two inches in diameter, five centimeters. Okay. And there's it's, uh, very common to have teeth and an eyeball and hair and all kinds of stuff in there, bits and pieces of that twin. Okay. And it's a benign thing, never becomes cancerous. And it's usually not the source of pain. The endometriosis would be this, the source of pain. So, um, uh, Charmaine, are you there? I'm here. Okay. So, endometriosis, of course, is the lining of the uterus, um, which gets up into the belly cavity. And here probably was a little hernia there because um, unless the doctors, when they did the cesarean section, left a little piece of the lining of the uterus, in the skin, so that's another possibility of how you got endometriosis there in your skin and your belly. But there's two possibilities. But uh, hang on, we'll be back, and Ms. Shar and I will give you some information on how to deal with this after these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go right back to uh, California and Christina. All right, uh, Charmaine? Yes. Okay, we need to deal with this because every time Christina goes through a cycle, um, the uh, estrogen she produces will stimulate those cells, the lining of the uterus cells, which are apparently in the skin here, and they swell up and, and cause um, discomfort. So there's a couple of feminine health products that we have and um, what would you uh, what would you give her for those in addition to the 90th century nutrients i would give her a product called woman's fx okay and i would give yeah, her a product called zero 
Excellent. Now, at 161 pounds, how much of the woman's FX liquid would you give her? I give her two ounces a day. Perfect. You get an A-plus there. Yep, one ounce of breakfast, one ounce of dinner. That's two quarts a month. And how many of the tablets of the Xerofem? Um, How many come in a thing? 60? 60, yep. So then she needs four a day then. Yeah, four a day, two at breakfast, two at dinner time. That'd be two bottles a month. And um, this is going to be a lifetime deal. Okay. And, of course, uh, that'll make uh, going through menopause simpler. And um, so give us a call every couple of weeks and let us know how things are going. But what you need to do with your little dermoid cyst, give it a name. Uh, give it a sort of generic name because you don't know if it's a male or female without doing a, um, a genetic test on it. I would just give it a name and talk to it once in a while, and it'll be a best friend to you. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to North Dakota. Ed, Carol, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Well, well Carol, you you're so on the much. air. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much, Dr. Wallach. I have two uh, questions. My whole family is using your products, and we love them, but I have Thank two, you. and I mm-hmm. need to know, will the products help keep our arteries clean, and my dog, who is four pounds, has clogged in glands. And I'm hoping you can answer those questions. I'm sorry. What was the second one? My, my little dog, she's four pounds. Mm-hmm. She has clogged anal glands with a lot mm-hmm. of inflammation, and I'm hoping you can help. Okay. Now, Charmaine, this is a Charmaine thing. you got a little dog that's four or five pounds. Yeah, the vet just squeezes them out at the vet. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you don't want to take them to the vet to do that, what you can do, you can get these either these plastic gloves, lubricate it real good, and stick your index finger up the dog's rectum, and you can feel those glands when they're impacted. It'll be like a hard pee in there. And you can just um, put a little pressure. Don't put a lot of pressure. Put a little pressure on the gradual pressure, and you'll find the opening, and the contents will squirt out. And, of course, this is the same structure that gives the stinky smell to skunks, and so it, sometimes it does have a little bit of an odor to it. Now, um, the, on the artery thing in dogs, and they do get blocked arteries, they're just like all other vertebrates, including man. Um, uh, you want to make sure that you're not giving, you know, bacon grease and table scraps and burnt meats and things like that and fried foods to the dog. But um, what would you do uh, as a supplement program for a little four-pound dog, Shar? I would give them the Archivex, and I also squeeze on my five pound dog. I squeeze one DFA and the food every day. There you go, Arthrodex. It's one scoop per 25 pounds of body weight, so you're looking at about a quarter of a scoop. Arthrodex, one of those little EFAs. I would also throw in a half a tablet a day of the Ultimate Daily Classic tablets. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to California. And Maria, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Maria, you're on the air. Hello, doctor. Hi, how can we help you? Hi, um, so I have a question. I've actually uh, been diagnosed as being anemic. Um, I'm currently breastfeeding. I have an eight-month-old baby. And the other symptoms I've actually been having for quite some time now, it's I've been very tired, um, I've had some acid reflux, bloating, cramping. I bruise very easily. Um, I have this condition of the skin called vitiligo, and I'm always very thirsty. Um, I've been told I've been vitamin D deficiency, and along with all that, I've also been having a lot of throbbing, and um, a throbbing pain in my head, and I have very bad vision. Okay, how much you weigh? I weigh 135, and I'm 5'3". Okay. Did you ever have any eczema, dermatitis, or psoriasis, or asthma as a kid? No. No, not to my knowledge, no. Well, you'd know. (laughs) Okay. Do you have any children? I do. I have an eight-month-old baby. Okay. So that's your only children, your only child? Yes. Okay. Has a child have any problems with uh, skin problems, eczema, diarrhea, constipation? Respiratory um, problems? No, none of that. I did notice I did get my first spot, my first um, white spot um, at the age, I think I was about maybe 12 years old, but they mm-hmm. would go away and come back, and now it's just mm-hmm. been getting a lot worse. I have it on my elbows, my around my eyes, 
my mouth, mm-hmm. um, and my mm-hmm. hands. Okay. So, um, let's see here. Uh, we got your weight, 135. Okay. Um, Char, what do you think is going on here? She's got all these, got like eight different problems. What do you think she's got going on? Well, I know she's got a gluten intolerance because she said she's got little ego, too, and that's a gluten. Can be a gluten problem, absolutely, because uh, she can't absorb the nutrients necessary to make skin color. Okay. Breastfeeding the baby. And it's kind of interesting to me that you said you had bruising. Yes. I get bruised very and, easily. Okay. And let's see here. Did you give me your age? How old are you? I'm 29. 29. Okay. Uh, do your knees pop and crack when you squat down? Um, yes. Okay. So what do you think causes that, Char? Not being able to absorb. Yeah. Okay. What's she not absorbing? She's not absorbing calcium or anything. Mm-hmm. Gel. Yeah, minerals. Exactly. So you got you got the beginnings of arthritis. Now, anemia can be caused by a whole lot of different deficiencies, okay? And um, pernicious anemia is B12 deficiency, of course, iron deficiency anemia, copper deficiency anemia, which goes along with the vitiligo. And then um, reflux is not really acid reflux. It's actually caused by lack of acid. And so what would you do for this gal? What would you do for Maria Charmaine? Oh, boy. Well, I would... First of all, we get her on a gluten-free diet because that's a very important mm-hmm. so she can absorb everything. And then I would get her on a health... I think I would get her on a healthy... Can I say it? Bone and joint? Healthy bone mm-hmm. and joint pack. And I would also add... She needs to take the enzymes for before she eats a meal. And um, yeah, the she could take the... Have her take the ultimate enzymes. Yeah, yeah, I'd have her take one before each meal to help uh, increase her efficiency of absorption of nutrients. What would you do for the bloating part? For the bloating, um, don't the enzyme come with therapy oil. Oh, okay, yeah, the um, uh, peppermint oil. Yeah, peppermint oil, five or six drops in a cup of warm water, and um, this will almost immediately um, deal with the bloating. And, of course, reflux, you want the ultimate enzymes. Take one of those, say, two minutes for each meal with a couple ounces of water. And, again, the healthy bone and joint pack. I would also um, take, at 135 pounds, uh, I'd go ahead and, and add our ultimate selenium to the program, ultimate selenium to the program. I'd get to one bottle a month and take two at breakfast, two at dinner time. And then uh, give us a call every couple of weeks. Uh, um, how old's the baby? He's eight months. Eight months, good. Now, uh, because you're thirsty all the time, that could be due to the anemia, that could be due to a variety of things, but I'd have your blood sugar tested or or your urine sugar level tested. Okay, you run to a pharmacy and get those test strips yourself. Do it yourself. I wouldn't go to the doctor and get the expense of everything. And um, uh, do, do your own blood test to see if you have diabetes or your own urine test, a screening test to see if you have a sugar in there to see if you have diabetes. So this is um, something I would certainly check out when you're thirsty all the time. Give us a call every couple of weeks and let us know what you find. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. All right, let's head to San Jose, California. And Gita, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Gita, you're on the air. Yes, hello, Dr. Wallach. Hi. I'm I'm calling for my friend's dog. Uh, He is 13 years old, 60, 60 pounds, a uh, Collie Manawa mix, and uh, he has hemangiosarcoma and recently had a splenectomy, uh, and he has mild arthritis in the LS junction since 2013. And, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's doing okay now after his surgery, um, but... Uh, what okay, where was this? Where was this hemangiosarcoma located? In the liver, in the lungs, on the skin? Where is it? At? Um, I, ooh, I have to get that. I think it, it was uh, not in the liver. There's, oh, there's no evidence of the tumor in the section of the liver, but mm-hmm. um, it uh, was relatively high in the, in the. There were multiple nodules examined from mm-hmm. the omentum sure. chain. Mangio. Momentum. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. That's a little fat covering over the intestines. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, sixty pounds. Okay, Char, you're a dog person. What would you What would you give this dog for just a general 
health uh, support as well as a, a good source of antioxidants to support the immune system. Arthur Dex, about three scoops a day. Okay, there, Arthur Dex, three scoops a day is one per 25 pounds of body weight. You're exactly right. Uh, sarcoma is a malignant cancer, so you want to support the immune system. So three scoops of the Arthur Dex probably go through um, two canisters per month at that. What would you do to increase the ORAC points, the antioxidant points? I give them, mix up the uh, BTT 2.0 tablet. Okay, very good. I'd go ahead and uh, give them a two a day, one at breakfast, one at dinner time. The one bottle a month of the BTT 2.0 tablets. And that's going to um, increase the ORAC points, which uh, supports the immune system. It's an acronym for oxygen radical absorption capacity. And um, the main thing is not to drive the cancer, okay? Uh, no bacon grease, you know, no food scraps, especially of fried foods and salads with oils and stuff like that. Uh, keep all that away and um, let the dog's immune system uh, defend itself. Okay, give us a call. Let us know how the dog is doing. You know, we have a lot of pets today. Pets are part of the family. We serve, you know, being a veterinarian, we really appreciate that. And I know Shar is a doggy person. She's got two dogs. And stick with us. We'll be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Yongevity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie after these messages. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young Jimmy, 95 Crusade. And, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to San Jose, California. And, Adam, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Adam. You're on the air. Hi, doctor. Thank you. Yeah, I have a uh, dog. He has an elevated heart rate. And he's uh, been coughing a lot. He does have a pronounced heart murmur. And he won't always eat like he used to. How old is the dog? He is 11 years old. And what kind of dog is it? It's a Shih Tzu. Okay, what does it weigh? Uh, 18 and a half pounds. Okay, and are you feeding it dry dog food or canned dog food? I was actually feeding him raw, uh, raw food. Okay, you're making up the diet yourself? No, I'm buying it in a store. Okay, it's a complete dog food with vitamins and minerals added to it? Yep. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay, 18 and a half pounds, uh, rapid heart rate, heart murmur. Um, Char, what would you do for this dog for a general supplement program? And then what would you do for an 18 and a half pound, say 20 pound dog for heart problems? What would you do, first of all, for the general nutritional support? First, first I would give him the Arthrodex, a scoop okay, for day. Yeah, one scoop and a day. Then, and, and then I would add selenium, obviously, to the, to the food every day. Okay, I'd add the ultimate selenium. Exactly right. I'd go ahead and give the 18-and-a-half-pound dog one capsule. If he opened up and dumped in the food or put down the dog's throat. I would also, because it has a rapid heart rate, I would also give it a herbal thing that we have comes in capsules. has FX at the end of the word. What's it called? Um... Uh, Cardio FX. Perfect. You get an A+. Plus. I'd go ahead and give the dog one uh, Cardio FX capsule. Um, also, you can either open up, dump it in the food, or give it to the dog orally. And then there's one other thing I would give, just in case there's a little touch of congestive heart failure in there. Uh, it's for metabolism. Uh, vitamin, or excuse me, de-stress. De-stress. Perfect. You get an A+++++ plus 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 de-stress. I'd go ahead and give two capsules of the de-stress, either down the dog's throat or open up, dump in the food. And all of these are designed to support a heart metabolism, heart function, um, and so forth. Uh, and it's very, very common that um, there's not enough of these nutrients in sort of non-commercial foods, 
um, somebody makes them up and, and they don't quite give enough of these things or they don't have any of them in there at all. And so you want to read the label, make sure it's complete uh, dog food as opposed to just uh, natural raw dog food. And you have to remember, out in the wild, wolves eat the skin and the liver and the stomach and the intestines and the bones and the ligaments and tendons as well as the meat. And so they're getting a lot of nutrients, particularly they eat the contents. If they catch a rabbit, they'll eat the contents of the rabbit's stomach. And so they're getting the things that the rabbit ate, including carrots and celery and cabbage and grass and, and acorns and things like that. They're not going to go out of their way to eat those things, but they will eat the contents of their prey's stomach. And so we have to kind of replace that with the nutritional supplementation. And unless there is a defect, and you'd have known that earlier, eight, you know, 11-year-old, you'd have known that earlier. So uh, this is something that's been acquired and uh, usually easily dealt with. How much time do we have here? Uh, yeah, about Doug? 30 seconds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take it and just, uh, if you would, Adam, give us a call every couple of weeks. Let us know how puppy's doing. And I remind you, uh, get a hold of the book, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, the book Hell's Kitchen, the book Energy Crisis, and start using the Slender FX Keto Caramel Shake and the Keto Caramel Bar. Lose that half a pound to two pounds a day. And the magic here is once you understand that being overweight and, and obese and having type 2 obese is not genetic, it's, a certain, it's a certainly all nutritional deficiencies, and you will see magic happen and you will not gain the weight back. You were able to wean yourself off a of medication based on your blood test. Just follow what your doctor says and you'll be amazed. Thank you so much, Char. Uh, super job as usual. Thank you, Doug and Richard. Superlative job as usual. A lot of great testimonies and questions today. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America.